Hello everybody and welcome back to my first week bodysuit building tutorial. This is part 5, this is the final part in the series and we're basically just going to start this one off by carrying on from the last one where we're just running all the fire through the machine getting it all sewn up. Now one thing I will note is later on in this video we do change to a different bodysuit. That's because I just so happen to have lost all of the actual footage from that part of the bodysuit that I sewed up in this tutorial. Bearing in mind this was well over a year ago, so I haven't worked on it in quite a long time, haven't got it anymore, so thankfully I was at that point in a different bodysuit build, so I've just continued from there. Uh, obviously, you'll see when it happens, it's a totally different colour. But what I'll do is just carry on at that point, it's got all of the same processes, um, and I'll talk you through that as we get there. I'm going to take a moment here to just apologise for my very noisy bird in the background. I can hear her shouting and screaming, and when I play back the audio I can hear it clear as day. Um, she is just chilling, having a little play, so she might be a little bit noisy. I am sorry about that, I'm working on it in the future. Um, hopefully my workshop's going to be away from my house eventually, so that should help with the quality of my videos. Okay, at this point I'm just going to take a quick break from sewing everything up. Um, I believe I only have the zip to go and a couple other seams, um, so you just want to try it on the mannequin as you go, making sure everything fits properly. Take in any seams as you go, if you've just got little alterations to make, that's not a problem. Or you can just wait until the end and take them all in all together. What you can do once you've sewed everything up, if you would like to, is just pop a little zigzag stitch on the outside of the seam. Uh, this can just stop the fur from unraveling itself. I mean, fur is a really good fabric for not unraveling itself, but at the same time, it's a precaution you may want to take if it's your own suit. I'm still debating whether I'm going to use this or not. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Just a little bit of practice, really. So now I'm just going to go ahead and install the zip. Um, there's a bunch of different methods for doing this. What I've done is sewn it from the outside um, and flipped it round so that it gives you a really nice crisp hidden zipper and a nice edge. However, um, it's quite difficult to do up the zips on your fur with the fur this way. It can be a complete and utter pain. You might not want to do it this way. Um, Matrices has a really good tutorial on how she installs zippers and what I'll do is I'll link you to that one in the description so you can check that out if you want. It's a lot easier to do before you've sewed the whole bodysuit up as well. Now there's going to be quite a long part of this video where I'm just sitting here sewing. This is where I'm finalising my seams, doing the last couple of bits, and then I think I'm doing the zigzag stitch around on these. Um, as I said, I recorded this a very long time ago, I don't remember exactly. Uh, like I say, that's something you can do, you don't have to do it. Some people do, some people don't. It doesn't make a huge difference. Um, but I'm just going to leave you guys to, to watch that bit. Like I say, it's quite long, it's quite boring, it is just me sitting down running fair through a machine, but... You know, <laughs> it's all part of the making process, so I'm going to show you it anyway.
now that I've got all of those seams sewn up, what I'm going to do is just uh, take it back to the duct tape dummy and try it on for size. You can never try it on too much as you're making a costume, just to make sure that it fits every step of the way, because there's nothing worse than getting to the end, realising it doesn't fit properly and that you could have sorted that out earlier, because then it just becomes a little bit of a nightmare to sort out. Now you want to take the time to take a step back, brush all the seams through, make sure everything looks okay, make any alterations. You can see I've pinned in at the back there because it was a little bit too baggy um, and I'll go on to fixing that as well. Now here's that crazy change I was talking about where it suddenly changed to a different suit. You'll notice my workshops shifted around quite a lot as well, I've got a lot more space and a lot more supplies. Um, most of what I do for the arm sleeves I do by measurements. So I'll start by measuring the armhole that I've got cut out there and then take measurements of the client's length of their arm, the circumference of the bicep, the circumference of the wrist, um, and then basically just translate this to a paper pattern, which I'll then cut out and go from there. Now that I've got my pattern, which is for one half of one arm, this will just be flipped. If I've got any markings, I can draw them on at this point, which is what you can see me doing here, um, and then cut that pattern apart. Remember where you need to add seam allowance to sew the markings together. Um, if you've already added it on in your pattern, which I believe I did, then um, you'll need to remember to only add seams where the markings are. So you can always trace these patterns and redraw them, including the seam allowance, to make sure you don't get confused. And now the scary part, just cutting the fur out. I literally just go straight for it with arms. I, I don't see that it can go too terribly wrong. Um, so you can just see me cutting out all those pieces and then sewing them together to make up the arm sleeve. So because we've done one half of one sleeve, you're going to cut out four of each piece, which is going to be um, two one way and two flipped. Unless your arms are asymmetrical and they're different on the back, two on the front, in which case you'll need to make two patterns and then cut out one of each and then flipped. You can see with the top of the arm, because I've just got one piece that's got a straight edge along the top, instead of putting a seam on the top of the arm, because that just, you know, makes everything a little bit more complicated and possibly um, makes it not look quite so neat, I've literally just flipped the piece on that line um, and carried on that way. And now the nice and simple part, just pinning the pieces together, I'm going to start with the light blue on the outsides of the one big blue piece, just to get all of the arm sleeves together um, before I sew them into a tube, if that makes sense. Makes sense in my head, not quite out loud. Seeing as we've got a lot of sewing to do, I'll just take a moment here to add on a little bit of a tip that I've learned over time. With pinning the, the, the seams together when it comes to fur, you want to put your pins quite close together, I'd literally say a couple of inches apart at the most. Um, and between each of these you need to pinch your fur tightly and use the pin to pop all of the fur down inside the seam. This is probably the best way for you to prevent um, as much fur coming out the, the back of the seams as possible. And basically minimise how much brushing you're going to need to do to neaten up these seams afterwards. One arm down and now I move on to the second one, it's exactly the same process, but again I'll leave it all in here for you anyway. So now what we're going to do is bring over the bodysuit itself. 
Um, what I tend to do is put the sleeve on the inside the bodysuit around the outside and then hopefully you, you can register the, the top and the bottom seams of the sleeve and where they would go on the suit. Basically what you want to do is pin one of the seams, make sure you find halfway in the hole and where halfway in the arm sleeve is and pin that part and then the halfway point again um, and then slowly just pin all the way around. Don't just pin one and then the next bit pin that bit, next bit pin that bit because what you risk doing then is distorting the sleeve and getting it uh, gathered a lot more in some places than others. Hopefully that makes sense, it's a little bit complicated to explain, but just try and pin it at regular intervals all the way around before you go back in and pin every little bit. These tight curves are honestly a little bit of a nightmare. Um, and I, I feel like the, the sleeve seams are going to take a lot more uh, sort of aggressive pulling than the rest of the suit. Areas like the armpits and the crotch, you're going to want to double stitch if you can, because they're the areas that will stretch the most with movement, just to reinforce the seams a little bit um, and try and prevent them from pulling apart. So there we go, there's those arms sewn together, which means the only thing we have left is sewing the padding in. So what I'm essentially doing here is putting the bodysuit on the DTD, putting the padding into the right places, making sure it's um, orientated properly, um, and then safety pinning it from the outside. This way I can turn the bodysuit inside out and have the padding in the right place to sew it in afterwards. People do padding in all sorts of different ways, I'm still investigating which way works best for me but I've done this on the past few suits and this works out just fine. So if there's no problem with it, I don't necessarily see uh, a reason for doing it any differently. So now we've turned the bodysuit back inside out. What I've done is put safety pins in a few key places so that the padding can't shift around. And then from the inside, what we're gonna wanna do is pull the fur around the padding, not so it's tight, not so it's loose, so it just fits in there snugly, and then pin all the edges where I'm gonna be sewing this together. And now what we're going to want to do is take quite a strong hand sewing thread and blanket stitch this in. I tend to use about four smaller lengths of thread, just in case anything should happen to snap and then the whole piece won't sort of unravel and come out. Not that you necessarily need the sewing anyway, because generally speaking there's perfect size pockets between the suit and the wearer for these to go anyway. The, the thread just sort of helps keep it in place, keep it nice and stable. What I'm doing here is ramping the speed of the video up to 32 times speed because essentially you're just watching exactly the same thing as I sew these edges. Um, so it's going to go ahead a lot faster. Um, and I've, I've cut the end off a little bit because honestly you're not going to need to see it all and I'm trying to keep this video under 15 minutes. After this there's a couple of little embellishments that you can add like bias binding around the neck hole so it doesn't stretch. That's relatively straightforward. Um, and what I've done but not filmed is just add the little pocket for the tail, the little slot for the tail to fit through because I attach all of my tails via a belt under the bodysuit because it gives them a little bit of extra stability and spring. But, except for those couple of little tiny bits, which you guys can do yourself, the bodysuit is now finished. I'll look to do a separate video on feet in the near future. But until now, this was the bodysuit building tutorial. This was a full digitigrade tutorial. Um, I really hope you guys have enjoyed it all from start to finish. I mean, I've had a blast with it. Um, I just wish I could have updated more frequently for you. However, I'm hoping in the future my tutorials can come weekly. That would be great, wouldn't it? So until next time, guys, thank you very much for watching and best of luck with your bodysuit building endeavors.